experience. The very first performance study was in 2007, and I'll step you through what they did here. They had two groups, a placebo group that got nothing, and a group that got beta alanine of, again, four to six grams per day. They took measurements at the start at week zero, they took measurements at week four, and they took measurements at week 10. And the main measurements they took, they took actual muscle samples, so they could measure the amount of carnosine in the muscle. And they did a performance test. They, they put people on the bike and made them ride at 110% of their maximum. So it's a test that lasts about five minutes, all out cycling. And on the placebo side, what you can see, as expected, there's no increases in muscle carnosine, because they weren't getting anything. And there's no increases in performance. Their performance tests were the same every week because there was no change. On this side, this is what they were at the start, week zero. After four weeks, their muscle carnosine went from 20 up to about 30, and their performance went from 60 up to 70 kilojoules of work done. It was an increase in performance. After 10 weeks, as they continued more supplementation, you got an even greater amount of muscle carnosine and an even greater amount of performance. So this was the first study in 2007 published that showed, indeed, um, during high intensity performance, when you have a lot of acid production, where it normally shuts down the muscle, these subjects were able to go longer at high intensity and improve their performance. Since then, this is a review. There's been all sorts of studies looking at different types of tests, everything from 1RM maximum strength, the neuromuscular fatigue, high intensity endurance, aerobic power, and with a lot of new supplements, we aren't always sure what types of exercise situations are best to prove the efficacy of the supplement. So, so far, you, what you can see in this review, you see a lot of yeses and noes, because some studies have shown yes, and some studies have shown no effect. Most studies that have shown no effect are probably a situation where you haven't produced a lot of acid. So if I have you go into the weight room and just lift one RM max once, you, you haven't produced a lot of acid there. The, the limiting factor there is probably creatine and just muscular strength. And so when you look at, say, um, max strength, there's two studies that show no. But to me, that makes absolute sense. It, carnosine isn't going to limit max 1RM strength. When you look at um, studies where it's high intensity, you have more studies coming through with yeses. So you, as with any supplement, creatine, for example, is not going to help a marathon runner because it's not the right energy system for the marathon runner. So a few other studies uh, that have shown since then positive effects. Uh, this came out, oh, that's supposed to say um, uh, 2010, sorry. <laughs> this came out this year, beta alanine improved sprint performance and endurance cycling. So what they did here is they had cyclists go for three or four hours at a moderate pace and then do a performance sprint at the end. And the performance sprint was enhanced in the beta alanine group. And so when you look at Tour de France, yes, they're endurance athletes and they're going slow for three or four hours. But there's a lot of stages that end in an all-out sprint at the end, and it seems to show a benefit in that situation. There's one study that it so far has looked at the effects of circuit training. I think this is an area that could use more science because there's only been one study so far. So in situations when you're doing a lot of reps and there's a lot of acid buildup, this study found that the um, athletes were able to do 22 or 25 percent more work because normally the muscle would shut down from the acid during the, during the weight routine, but they're able to get three or four more reps out. Um, and when you add that up over the eight week study, it was 20% uh, more work and, and uh, less feelings of fatigue in college football players. Uh, and they've also done different isokinetic contraction, like set into a biodex and isolating the quad, and that's that, that shown in performance benefits as well.